Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So with that in mind, let's just dive in and let's talk about a few things. So overall, in terms of the overall markets, uh, we have been watching Bitcoin closely, especially now that we are in the weekend. You, you know, usually when we talk about like the weekend, we get that volatile swing in the market. So far, things have been stable. It's like almost like the calm before the storm. Um, on the 24-hour span, you guys do see some altcoins still kind of breaking out. Uh, the graph position that I did take is doing fairly well, up 24%. Uh, we also do see KDA up 38, almost 39%. I told you guys to you know, make sure that you are paying attention to KDA and also even graph. Uh, those are the two highest gainers right now on the top 100 list. And of course, a few other altcoins are doing pretty good right now. Now, in terms of XRP, XRP has been sitting a little bit stable at around like roughly 42 cents, which I actually do like. It has been holding this area for a little bit of time now and kind of building a floor, if you will. Uh, almost the same with Bitcoin, which will address Bitcoin a little bit here shortly. So in terms of the seven day span, right, um, we had this massive wick down followed by a little bit of a higher low scenario at almost like 28K. And now we're kind of building that floor almost at like 29K. I'm hoping that this scenario does continue to, you know, play out. But, you know, worst case scenario, we retest the lows that we recently just hit. Uh, have that capitulation wick down tomorrow or today, if you will, uh, where we will see some nice uh, price lows on, you know, altcoins, specifically even XRP. But you guys do see the close was roughly 30K uh, today. Uh, so when we look at this, we are, have been in a higher, you know, sort of, you know, a higher high in terms of the closing points on the daily since going back to May 11th. Coincidentally, this is when, you know, the bearish price action started to happen. You guys do see the 28.1K, 26.3K. And then, of course, this started to rise in terms of the lows. So this is pretty interesting. Now, in terms of the XRP price chart, um, I actually have this level that we're currently at uh, guided on the chart now. I know that we wicked down similar wicks back here in February of 2021 and also even the end of February of 2021. Um, but look at where we settled on support. It's roughly around the 41 cent zone. Now, I'm not going to say that this is going to hold 100 percent or, you know, definitely. But I will say this. If we do break this support region and we continue to wick down and possibly even break the lows going back as far as, you know, February, which we did slightly wick down below it by a couple cents. Uh, we will most likely see a test of this range down here at about like 22 and a half cents, so almost 27 uh, and a half cents around that range. Now, of course, could we go lower on this? Yes, it is. You know, we can come down to test the you know SEC lows of you know roughly the December January time frame, uh, which is you know 100% possible. Like I've said, I've said this multiple times. Now, this area would most likely be roughly around this like 17 cent zone. Could we come down that low? Yeah, it is possible. Again, it all depends on how low you know Bitcoin does climb down. In my opinion, though, and I've said this multiple times, I do believe that the low is in. I do think that the bottom is already in place on Bitcoin. Um, if Bitcoin does go on a nice little ride up, we could see XRP and most altcoins kind of take a back seat uh, while we do go on that wave five. And like I've said, if you believe in the four year cycle, hey, yeah, we are in the bear market. We've seen our topping point already. Uh, we're calling it quits basically. Um, but in my opinion, we are in a lengthening cycle. And not only that, but you know, these prices that we're seeing in this market right now, uh, I, I think that these are incredible opportunities. But also we do see here from Kevin Cage, I believe XRP survives and thrives in the future after all of this. Those that catch lower prices will have guaranteed wealth in my opinion. March 2020 took us to about 11 cents. December 2020 SEC lawsuit took us to about 17 cents, both having over 1000% plus moves up afterward. Where will our bottom be? Now, like I said, you know, if our bottom's already in place, could you imagine, right? So as you guys do see on the chart, I could actually kind of show you this real quick. So this was roughly about like a 1,067% of an increase in price. Um, even going back, uh, back to like the March of 2020 dropping point, you know, on that nice high that we've seen back in even the um, August timeframe, it was like roughly, you know, a 210% move. But then in November, uh, we also seen roughly about a 649% uh, target being hit. And like I said, on this nice high that we've seen here, you know, this was actually a nice little profit point because this was an 1800% of an increase in price, which is pretty significant. But again, 
you know, we go back to 2017, 2018, we know the potential behind XRP. Um, when we take a look at where we are now and kind of go off of the bottom wick here and say, you know, what would the price actually be if we did like a 1000% a move? It's exactly at the all time high almost, except that it's like roughly 84%. If we repeat that same exact price move, uh, so roughly like around, it's it's very hard to get the exact percentage, but we can kind of look through here and uh, kind of go off of where we would be. I want to actually look at where we would be in terms of like one uh, $3.84. So it would be 1,050%. Uh, that's basically our all-time high that is listed on the Coinbase uh, chart. Now, of course, you know, I, I, I could go off of percentages like this all day long. Uh, it's not really that accurate at all in terms of TA, but if we did do another 1,000 plus percent move, that's going to be pretty significant, but I'm aiming higher in terms of the FIB levels at around like the 10 to $15 range. Um, but also we do see here in Germany, so Germany actually had a pretty significant update. Uh, we do see here, you know, the sale of acquired crypto assets will remain tax-free after one year, even if used for staking slash lending cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, and of course, this is going on with all crypto in general. Um, and we actually do see a few people saying, you know, the USA needs to adopt zero cap gains on Bitcoin. Multiple nations, including Germany, which is a G7 nation, have already adopted it. It's now time to move this direction in the US. And honestly, I do completely agree. In fact, in the United States, we have our president saying, you want to bring down inflation? Let's make sure the wealthiest corporations pay their fair share. Essentially taxing the rich while, you know, not paying attention to at all the Fed, who has been printing massive amounts of the US dollar. In fact, we've actually seen them trying to offset the amount that they have printed. It's actually pretty comical. Um, and I'm telling you guys right now, when we look at things happening around the Fed specifically, things are boiling up. And I'm going to talk about that here shortly. But I just think that this is comical. 80% of the US dollar in the last two years per day. I mean, that's just insane to me. Um, and it's definitely not, you know, taxing the rich. Like if we tax the rich, first off, it doesn't even matter. But also, Again, I think that we need somebody who's going to actually do these things instead of just saying it out loud. Um, but we also do see here global market regulators are likely to launch a joint body within the next year to better coordinate cryptocurrency regulations. This goes back to Johnny Deaton's tweet here. You know, the SEC basically targeting uh, them. Yeah, I think that the SEC definitely needs to... Honestly, when we look at the SEC and things happening around the lawsuit, I think that when we talk about things with the Hinman speech, the Hinman emails... Uh, we've just been seeing the SEC dragging their foot, their feet, right? And I really want to see some major announcement already around this lawsuit. It's been far too long. Um, XRP holders have been, you know, hurt by this lawsuit, um, and we still continue to be hurt by it to date. The price action has been 100%, in my opinion, uh, sluggish because of the SEC lawsuit. But honestly, we know the true value behind XRP. I'm not g giving up on XRP just because of time. You know, patience is the easiest way to shake out weak hands. And I do think that they are succeeding within that. Um, but also, guess what? We might not even need the SEC. And I've talked about this with Congress. Congress has been talking about, you know, regulations around crypto for a while, um, trying to work together to come up with a, a major plan to really kind of just go above and beyond the SEC. And, uh, you know, I think when we usher in those regulations, I think that that's going to unlock a ton of doors, not only for crypto assets to be adopted, but also for crypto to have that legitimacy factor really kind of thrive behind it. Uh, now, we also do see here from Blockchain Backer, we watch the dollar and the euro USD pair as the euro is within the basket of currencies that the US dollar is measured against in the DXY. Is it weird that we finally hit that level the exact day, May 12th, the crypto high volume dumped? This is, you know, that mind boggling kind of stuff. And here we have these charts laid out. So the euro US dollar uh, basically hitting that ABC correction down here, which goes all the way back to 2017's low on the euro dollar, uh, you know, pair before it went on that nice rally to the 2018 highs. This is also why when we look at Credible Crypto's chart, really laying out the 2023 topping point, things get very interesting very fast when you kind of look at the patterns going back to 2017, 2018. We also do see down here the crypto total market cap, excluding Bitcoin, which is again, altcoins. Uh, we really kind of look at this ABC and we have this nice little impulse. Again, this is from the 2019 to 2020 timeframe, uh, specifically that March of 2020, you know, crashing point. It's pretty interesting. 
I, I, I'd say that we should definitely be watching these charts and kind of comparing and contrasting them uh, because I think that we can really get a good picture on where we are. And of course, you know, he doesn't like to use trend lines, but we do see this trend line on Bitcoin that has been holding up in terms of its integrity, which looks very good. And then, of course, he does, you know, follow this up with XRP. If you guys haven't been watching Blockchain Backers channel, you guys should 100% be watching his channel. He does incredible technical analysis on XRP and overall on the market. And uh, we do see this trend line on XRP as well. Uh, it looks pretty great going all the way back, uh, back to March of 2020. This is also why I've said, you know, our bottom could be, you know, in. Of course, trend lines are not that accurate. I kind of like to depict the market on, you know, higher highs, higher lows, things like that. Um, but of course, this is very interesting, especially when you compare and contrast the lows going all the way back in time. Um, but we also do see here the crypto total market cap, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, specifically just around altcoins. We are tapping that summer low demand area. And uh, we also even do see Bitcoin US dollar, right? Here's that, you know, summer demand zone. We came down a little bit deeper. But again, this actually goes back. So this is actually the March of 2020 dropping point, I believe. Or no, this is actually beforehand because this is going all the way down to like, you know, $1,800 and like $1,900. So this is actually even further back in time uh, before even March of 2020. But Again, you can see the you know comparisons on these charts before rallies did start to happen. Uh, it's just massive demand zones being targeted for, of course, liquidity. So things are definitely getting juicy. I would say average in. I'm averaging in. Of course, you guys don't need to follow me, but you know I I, I truly believe in the you know extended bull run. And when we talk about this, I have been putting my money where my mouth is. I've been buying. I've been averaging in. I've been taking positions. Um, yeah, I think that it is high risk, but I do also think that it is high reward because guess what? Anything can happen. We don't know for certain. We could only kind of speculate a little bit. Um, now, I do want to talk to you guys about the Fed uh, basically putting out this massive uh, red alert. Basically, this is a huge signal that guess what? They are trying to protect themselves because they do foresee the inevitable coming. The Federal Reserve Powell says soft landing may depend on factors beyond the Fed's control. They're beginning to cover themselves. Similar to the Ukraine and Russia stuff, right? We've talked about this. This overall, when we talk about the presidential, you know, sort of election and all the things leading up to right now, things have been spiraling, spiraling out of control in terms of the economic structure of the U.S. Um, and we have been pointing blame onto everything besides what we are doing in our own country. We've been blaming COVID. We've been blaming the Ukraine. We've been blaming this, blaming that. But we never talk about the Fed printing 80% of the US dollar, massively inflating the economy, uh, while inflation rates are coming out at you know 8.5%, while we still see, again, rent and gas up 50%, consumer products up massively. You can go to the store, you could buy your groceries, you could see the prices. I just got, you know, my electric bill increased in terms of the kilowatts an hour. We are seeing increases happening everywhere and them still saying, hey, it's 8%. It's just comical to me. Um, but also we do see the largest, most rapid withdrawal of liquidity in history. One trillion dollar reduction in bank reserves over five months during previous quarter T uh, or QT. Sorry, uh, 1.3 trillion was withdrawn over five years. Behold. And here we have it. So we are seeing banks basically, I would say, disregarding the dollar at this point. I mean, look at this massive drop here at around the 2020 time frame. This was at all time highs. This is interesting. And we are seeing the percentage change drastically. And this is cash assets that all commercial banks are basically holding drastically decreasing. So this is very, very interesting. I actually sh uh, shared this in the Discord and really kind of talked to you guys about like, you need to pay attention to things that are happening right now because they are tra trying to save themselves as they see the inevitable happening. I do believe that we have one last major swing in this market before, of course, this does happen. Um, but we are playing a very risky game right now. But hey, I love taking risk. I think that the highest, you know, ROI, you know, moves in this market has been, you know, major risk factors. Hence, you know, a lot of things happening already in this market, specifically around like Luna and things like that. Um, of course, I'm not saying go invest your money into Luna, but, you know, a lot of those risky plays definitely do pay out. But in my opinion, I think that a lot of these prices within this market going, you know, forward are going to be legendary entry points. Um, I've talked about this even in terms of like the March of 2020 timeframe where a lot of people were too fearful to actually enter in. They thought much lower on Bitcoin. Uh, they thought much lower on a lot of altcoins. You know, greed works both ways.
Okay, you can either get too greedy to the point where you want more in terms of the upside move on an asset, or you could get even greedier, uh, greedier, sorry, wanting lower prices on an asset when we are already at some significant lows. XRP, you know, right now, currently from its highs back in April of 2021, you know, we are already down 83.35% when we came down to test 33 cents. Uh, currently at our, you know, level right now, we are down roughly 79%. Yeah, I think that a lot of these prices right now are fairly good entry points. Um, of course, have tight stop losses in place just in case to preserve your capital and possibly buy even lower. But honestly, I think that a lot of these assets right now are extremely oversold. Uh, and I know a lot of people will continue to say, Dude, you're going to look back at, on these prices in a month or two months or three months and say, wow, I could have just waited to get a better deal. That's why we average in. We don't go all in on every single trade. So with that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.